we are going to start looking at a few more details of graphs. And one of the details we're going to look at is something called a cusp. And so a cusp is this point that I've highlighted in yellow down here. This is a point where it's non-differentiable. A point exists, so it's continuous, but it's non-differentiable. And we have a, the concavity does not change across that point. Okay, so this is a cusp. So looking at this graph here, this is x to the power 2 over 5. Now this will generate a cusp. The root generates this kind of curve, okay? And because it's squared in the numerator of that power, we have an even function, so it's going to go to both sides. So looking at that function, we can see that there's a 0 at x equals 0. So I plotted the 0 on the graph already. And because of that power 2 here, this is all, the domain is all real numbers, okay? And the fact that it's an odd root also indicates that the domain would be all real numbers. Okay, so looking at the derivative, differentiating this expression, using the power rule, we're going to get 5 over 2. And then subtracting 1, we get power 3 over 5. So simplifying this, we get f prime of x is equal to 2 in the numerator, 5, and this is a fifth root, x to the power 3. Okay, so we have now uh, x in the denominator, so we have a restriction on the derivative. Okay, so x cannot equal to 0, so when we take a look at the derivative, at 0, I have a non-differentiable point. So checking the slopes on both sides, f prime of x at negative 1. Okay, putting a negative in that expression, we're going to get negative, so it's sloping down. And then f prime at positive 1, we're putting a positive in that expression, so we get positive slope, and it's sloping up through here. Okay, so we want to now check the concavity. Looking at the concavity, the second derivative, using the power rule, we're going to end up with negative 6 over 25, and then x to the power negative 8 over 5. Rewriting this, I'm going to end up with negative. In the denominator, I get 25, and this is going to be an eighth power and a fifth root. Okay, that eighth power makes the denominator always positive. Okay, so this is our second derivative. We know that x cannot equal to zero again, so we have a non-differentiable, well, sorry, the second derivative is not defined at that point. And then testing the concavity, the concavity at negative one, well, we know that the denominator is always positive, so this must be negative concavity. So we have the negative in the numerator gives us negative concavity on this side. So it's going to curve down. And then the second derivative on the right hand side, again, that negative six is going to make this negative. And so we have negative concavity on this side. So then plotting a couple points, we kind of have a very good idea what this looks like. It's going to curve down like that and like that. Plotting a couple points, we can plot in x is negative 1. We know y is positive 1 from that power 2. And then positive 1, 1, we can plot those points in here. So it's probably somewhere around here and here. And then this is going to curve up in that direction and curve up in that direction. And this is going to infinity, and we could do a limit to justify that. Okay, but we sh if we we don't this this is being more formal but limit as x goes to positive infinity of x to the power two fifths we know that's going to be infinite and as we go to the negative infinity same thing because that negative that power two it's going to make it positive as well okay so it's going to shoot off to the right and the left out to infinity. 
So these are, we're now having to check for more detail on graphs. Okay, we have asymptotes that we have to check where these non-differentiable points. Okay, we can change concavity across asymptotes. So we still, sometimes we, we're gonna be asked to check for the concavity on both sides. When we have piecewise functions, we have to worry about where the pieces join, what's happening at the, at the boundary points. Okay, so any points of discontinuity, including endpoints, we have to always be checking and just seeing what's making sure we understand what's going on. And then any non-differentiable points, we always have to check and test non-differentiable points. An example would be this cusp. We have a non-differentiable point at zero and we ended up with a cusp at that point.